Yo, what is up guys, it's your boy Mike, and we are back. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the one team that no one really seems to be talking about, and they have been winning games under the radar, and that is the Indiana Pacers. And they've been doing so without their best player, Victor Oladipo. If you guys are new to the channel and just now find me for the very first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family. The Pacers are quietly rising to the top of the East, only half a game out of second place, but it's not just that they are doing it, but how they're doing it. This team was proving they are a threat in the East without their best player. The Pacers are a real slow you down type team, and they are very, very good at it. The Pacers are bottom five in pace at 26th in the league, and once they slow you down, they take over and control the pace of the game almost the whole way through. Don't think they can't score though. If the Pacers control the pace of the game and defend you at the level that they do, there's no beating this team. They play to their strengths. That's the mistake that teams make in this league. They change their identity based on their opponent. The Pacers rarely play fast against a fast paced team, but that's the thing. They're good at that too, so even if they get into a fast paced duel, they can keep up with you no problem, but they rarely do that. Once the Pacers see things going too fast, they will slow it down, and you will see players on the floor do that. You know, when they put both their hands out and say, hey, let's slow it down. They did this to the Bucks just the other day. The Bucks were the highest scoring team in the league and kept them under 100 points. They locked up two of their three best players in Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton. If the Pacers control the pace of a game and defend at a high level, they are hard to beat. Anyone who doesn't know or watch the Pacers on occasions, or even the casual NBA fan, usually says one or two things about this team, and they couldn't be more wrong. And they are, one, the Pacers only have Oladipo and that's it. Or two, the Pacers aren't good. They only have one all-star, so they can't compete with this team or that team. And that actually couldn't be farther from the truth. The main argument from the Pacers contending in the East is that they only have one all-star. If that is the case, then tell me how a team with one all-star, who has been injured their last 12 games, counting the one he played, has won as many games and sticking around with teams in the standings that have two or more all-stars. As Paul Pierce put it, Victor Oladipo is the loneliest all-star in the league and couldn't be more wrong. He also followed up with, if Victor Oladipo doesn't go off every night, this team will lose a lot of games which is another thing that has been proven wrong this season by this Pacers team already. Actually, get this. This year, the Pacers have a better record without Oladipo than with him so far. But by no means am I saying they're a better team without him. This Pacers team has found ways to win without their best player on the floor. And it's crazy how people's only knock on this team from being a serious contender is that they have just one star. But yet without that one star, They've been able to win games and sustain their spot in the standings with teams with multiple stars. The Pacers, like I said, are half a game out of second in the Eastern Conference without Victor Oladipo in their last 12 games, or 11 games depending how you count it. But all of those guys like Jalen Rose, Chauncey, Paul Pierce included, Grant Hill, Isaiah Thomas, all those guys, they have said the same thing about this team, and that is... Don't be surprised if you see this team in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. Then they followed up with this. Don't be surprised if they make it out too. The most disappointing thing about this team doesn't even come to on-court matters, especially as of late. The most disappointing thing about this team is that they're always overlooked. Even when the Pacers are having the same success as other teams, especially with the given circumstances. The Pacers team is far better than what the media gives them credit for and way deeper of a team than people give them credit for as well. And I'll get into their bench later too. On shows like First Take, First Things First, Undisputed, The Herd, all those mainstream media sports shows, they never mention this team at all when discussing good teams in the Eastern Conference. Like the Pacers are always ignored for whatever reason. They talk about the same four teams when this Pacers team has had a better record than two of those four teams for some time of the season. There was a time in the season where the Pacers had secured the third spot in the East for over a month, and they didn't even talk about the Pacers and just skipped right over them. 
The Pacers had been floating around the third or fourth spot all season, only falling as low as fifth, and that was only for about a week. And the Pacers have had minimal talk of being a legit contender in the East, and I hope after this video, I will change your mind. Now I'm going to get into the Pacers as a whole, then I'll dive into the Pacers since Oladipo's injury, because they have been outstanding since then. The Pacers are just tenacious defensively. They are the best defensive team in the league. They lead the league in points allowed, and lead the league in games keeping their opponent below 100 points. And we saw a brilliant display of this when the best defense in the league in the Pacers faced off against the highest scoring offense, the Milwaukee Bucks. They swarm the three-point line and completely lock up the paint. The Pacers are second in defensive efficiency and second in points allowed in the paint. So those that were saying to trade Miles Turner need to stop looking at the stat sheet. But speaking of stat sheets, Miles Turner has been filling those out pretty well in the right spots. He's been lighting it up, so hopefully he can keep that up as well. And I'll get to him later too. The Pacers are also third in steals. They get in passing lanes and force bad passes and players such as Victor Oladipo, Thaddeus Young, Corey Joseph, and Darren Collison stripping people on picking their pockets and picking up steals. While doing that, they are third in points off turnovers, so you have to be very careful when handling the ball against this team. The Pacers are probably the most disturbing defense in the league. Brad Stevens even said himself after their loss to the Pacers earlier in the season that they just get into you and they don't let you get a shot off. I mean, you can just see it. They're just swarming. If you watch this team live, look at how many shot clock violations they force and just terrible shot selection they force upon their opponents because they close out so well. They play nearly every passing lane and rotate with near perfection. The help defense on this team is just insane. One key defensive stat for this team is that they're second in opponent second chance points. In other words, they're limiting the other team to just one possession and opportunity to score and then securing the rebound, which is vital in today's game. And the Pacers do a phenomenal job at doing so. You can thank this to the likes of the names I just mentioned before. Corey Joseph, Thad Young, Oladipo, and Darren Collison off the help. So when and if players got past them, now you have Sabonis, a solid body down low, to force tough shots in the post, and Miles Turner to rim protect, which he's been exceptional at, and secure the rebound after a defensive stop, which they get a lot of. So I wouldn't say to start Sabonis so quickly, or to trade Miles Turner. Miles Turner's defensive presence is just unmatched right now, and much more impactful than Sabonis than people realize. Turner is a top three rim protector, second in blocks per game with 2.8, and the number one shot blocker in total blocks. In no way would this team's defense be the same without Miles Turner in the paint protecting the rim. Miles Turner is a rim protecting big that can shoot, spread the floor, and make free throws. He has really been on his game lately and making this Pacers team even more dynamic. He's been grabbing boards like he needs to, reeling in double digit rebounds in his last four out of six games and averaging a near double double his last seven games. An underrated thing about this Pacers team though is how they finish games defensively and offensively, but especially defensively. The Pacers are the best team in the fourth quarter with the highest net rating and second in defensive rating and allowing the least amount of points in the fourth quarter to their opponents. Let me say that again. This team allows the least amount of points in the fourth quarter in the whole league to their opponents. Again, their defense. They allow the least amount of points in the paint in the fourth too. So they really lock up the paint down the stretch thanks to Miles Turner and keeping guys on the perimeter and not allowing guys to penetrate the defense. And when they do, they have the number two shot blocker to bail them out and protect the rim. They lead the league in opponent field goal percentage in the fourth quarter and third in opponent field goals made as well. Like I said earlier, they swarm you on rotations and close out very, very well, extending their opponent's possessions deeper into the shot clock, forcing those turnovers or those bad shot selections. And I mean the paces are just stingy and greedy on defense, and they're crazy good at it. They also lead the league in steals and second chance points in the fourth quarter. So they don't just take possessions from you, they keep you from getting more. 
second chance points is a really underrated stat. Limiting the other team to just one shot and securing the rebound afterwards is huge, especially in the fourth quarter, and the Pacers are the best team in the league to do that. You keep the other team from building momentum and closing out the game and just scoring in general, and that's always good. That's why they're so good at coming back on other teams. They lead the league in comebacks. Thaddeus Young and Victor Oladipo's leadership is unmatched on this team. When the Pacers start to struggle and get down big when the other team makes a big run, you see Thaddeus Young pull the team together and you just see him actively talking to everyone in the lineup and says, hey, we need to focus up, you need to be here, take this shot, make that pass, etc. This is when we take control and win the game. The broadcast crew does a really good job at capturing this during games. Thaddeus Young keeps the team's focus and mind right, while Victor Oladipo, he keeps the team's positive energy up. No matter how bad things are, you need guys like that. You see Victor Oladipo with his high energy and good personality in those interviews on the sidelines when talking to people and their teammates, and even when he was out, you saw him on the sideline cheering for guys and hoping this team gets that win. Now, let's talk about the Pacers without Oladipo because they have held their own without their best player really well. The Pacers have the third best record since Oladipo's injury on November 17th. They are 9-4 since that date. And the crazy thing is, for a reference of how good they've been without Oladipo, the Sixers since acquiring Jimmy Butler are 10-4. And, and the Pacers without their so-called best and only all-star are 8-4. So as people seem to claim, a team with essentially no all-stars, because Oladipo was injured at the time, they've been playing just as well as a team with three all-stars when they had essentially none, and half a game out of second place in the Eastern Conference. During that span, they have had the best defensive rating, being the only team keeping their opponents under 100 points. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, the Pacers have had a better record without Oladipo than with him standing at 10-6 and six at the time of his injury. And their numbers have actually been better without Oladipo as well, defensively and offensively. Now that they have their first team all-defensive player back, imagine how this team will be now. While Oladipo was out, you saw not one guy step up, but everyone did. One night it was three guys, one night it was two guys, or like it usually is, six or seven guys when they all hit double figures. But we can mainly thank Bojan Bogdanovic, Sabonis, and Miles Turner for that final stretch of Oladipo's absence. With the addition of Darren Collison really taking pride in his playmaking and on occasions scoring as well. But Bojan really set the tone offensively being the leading scorer since Oladipo went out. You had McDermott having his games and really finding his rhythm on this team and coming in clutch in some games as well. While you had those guys taking the charge offensively, you had guys like Thad Young, Corey Joseph, Miles Turner, and even Collison as well, getting up more steals to lead this team defensively, making them really hard to score on. So the depth of this team really kept them alive during Oladipo's outing, and this perfectly leads me into this team's bench. I decided to save this aspect of the Pacers for last because it's arguably their best attribute as a team, if not their defense, and that's their depth. The Pacers bench is one of the best in the league. The Pacers bench ranks second in net rating and second in offensive rating in all benches in the league. Corey Joseph and Sabonis have been really good. Yes, Corey has been struggling on offense, but don't act like he wasn't before that few game stretch. And on top of that, both him, being Corey Joseph, and Doug McDermott are both top 10 in defensive rating in the entire league. Corey Joseph, 4th, and Doug McDermott sits at 9th. Sabonis, as we all know, was a huge boost off the bench and debatably their 2nd or 3rd best player. And while Oladipo was out, <laughs> Bojan made a strong campaign to be thrown in that discussion. But yes, yeah, Sabonis is a walking double-double and a force to be reckoned with down low. The Pacers need to do everything they can to keep him and Miles Turner together. If they can manage to do that, then this team's future is incredibly bright. The Pacers bench is 3rd in field goal percentage and 4th in 3 point percentage. 
and it's amazing how if the starters will struggle to start the game, you'll see the bench come in and take the lead by 8 to 10 points and then you remember that the starters still have to come back in the game. Like I just mentioned, the Pacers bench is second in the league in offensive rating, bringing in 64 points per 100 possessions a game. Nate McMillan really does an exceptional job at mixing and matching lineups and rotations for this team when at full strength and even when they weren't at full strength. Now that the Pacers are at full strength, they are a serious threat in the East. Like I said, they're half a game out of second place in the Eastern Conference, now with their best player back. And we all saw how well this team was doing without him. So they can't double team anyone on this team anymore. And that's what makes them so lethal. They have so many weapons and they're so deep. If the Pacers keep this up, hey, just like Jalen Rose and all those guys said, don't be surprised if you see this team in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. And don't be surprised if they make it out. Those are their words, not mine. Let me know your thoughts on this Pacers team and how they're quietly rising to the top of the East and no one really seems to be noticing. They are a serious contender and not many people know it yet, but they will very soon. It's crazy how a team with depth can be a lot better than the team that's top heavy in all stars. And that's how this team beat you with their depth. Very few people talk about this team and they definitely deserve more of it. Hey, if you guys are new to the channel and just not finding me for the very first time, and you guys like what you see, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button and join the family. Thank you for watching. I hope all you guys have a great day. It's been your boy Mike, and you can let that beat drop.